Hello everyone. Uh, so today we will learn that how we can create an online map uh, by using ArcGIS Online. Uh, so actually you can use the data that already in ArcGIS Online and I'll start creating maps. Or you can use the data that you have in Ar your ArcGIS Pro and you can edit your data, perform some spatial analysis, and then you upload your data to ArcGIS Online and also create an online map. So we're going to use the lab that we used uh, from previous lab, which is lab 10, uh, where we have the mass routing data in Virginia and also we have the county population data in Virginia. So we're going to upload those two data sets to ArcGIS Online. And from there, we are going to create an online map. So let's go ahead and uh, open your lab 10, which is in your local ArcGIS Pro uh, project. Uh, if you cannot find out your ArcGIS uh, Lab 10 data, you can follow the Lab 10 tutorials to create the data set. You just need the data set. You don't need to recreate the map. So I'm going to go to the semantic map where we have the data set. And uh, to upload, so you have uh, the data, which we have the mass routing in VA, and also the county in VA. So you can go to share where you can share this entire map as a new map on ArcGIS Online, which is possible. So which means that it, they will include uh, all the symbols, colors, etc., and uh, just publish this one as a, a new online map. Or you can just share the data set. Let's say we want to share the data set, and we, we will use the data set and on the ArcGIS Online, and then from there, we will start from scratch to create a new map. So let's upload the data and also start a new map. So you can go ahead and publish your layer. Uh, so here you will see that uh, there are some uh, things that we should notice. So first, the base map should not be uploaded. Uh, so you cannot upload the base map as your data set. And sometimes if you have the symbols, uh, you may not, you may have errors in uploading those data sets. So for example, if I want to upload as it is now, and if I hit Analyze, and I will have uh, several errors. So for example, the, uh, the shape area cannot be used for symbology, uh, and also we need a unique numeric ID, which is not assigned. And also you can see the base map cannot be uploaded to ArcGIS Online. So uh, let's go ahead and resolve those uh, issues. So I'm going to first remove the base map. And I'm also going to remove the chart. Uh, uh, I'm not sure the chart can be uploaded or not. And, and also for the map, so I'm going to keep everything as its original format. So that is a single symbology. And for this one, I'm also going to convert that into this original format. So again, as I said, we just need the data set. And then we all start from scratch to create those maps. And the next, we go to the map properties, and we will allow assignment of the unique numeric IDs for sharing web layers. So let's check that box. All right. So now we should resolve all the errors. So let's go ahead and go to the uh, layers and uh, share the data set, the web layer. And let's go ahead and analyze one more time. All right, so now you can see we don't have any errors. So uh, let's give it a name. Uh, so for this one, uh, let's call it uh, lab 11 date set. Uh, you can give it a summary. So shooting data. Uh, you can give the tag. So tag is, is great to help you search your data. So mass shooting. VA and also this is for GOG this class. Uh, we will leave this as a feature and we want this one to be public to everyone because we want our map to be public to everyone, which means that the map and also data set should be public. And you can choose a folder. So this is a folder that on your ArcGIS online account. Uh, so you can see I already logged in with my GMU account. So before you upload your data to ArcGIS Online, you have to sign in with your ArcGIS Online account. And I'm using my GMU email as my ArcGIS Online account because uh, that is my organization account. 
Uh, so you need to sign in with your ArcGIS Online account before you upload data to ArcGIS Online. And also you have defined which folder you are going to save. So you can see I have several folders that I already uh, created. Uh, so I'm going to create a new folder. Uh, so I will call it 2023 fall demo. So which means that I'm going to create a new folder and I will upload uh, the date set which contains two layers into this folder. All right, uh, I think that's it. So I will go ahead and also click publish. Okay, so uh, we should not have any errors because we already analyzed and we didn't see any errors. Uh, so this may take um, for a few minutes, so depends on the size of the data that you want to upload. Uh, so you can always uh, uh, analyze your data, clean your data, like drawing your data, enrich your data in, Arc in ArcGIS Pro, and then you can upload the data to ArcGIS Online, and from there, we can use online mapping functions to create online maps. All right, uh, so now you can see uh, my web layer or my data set has been successfully published. So now it's on online. So now you can just safely close this ArcGIS Pro project. Make sure you don't save it so that you will not lose your map. So I'm going to go ahead and close and I'm going not to save that. Uh, so now I will go to ArcGIS Online. So, uh, so now we just we will do everything online. So you go to ArcGIS Online website and you sign in with your ArcGIS Online account. Uh, if you have your ArcGIS Online account, just log in from there. Uh, if you are using your organization uh, account, uh, so in my case, we are using GMU. So we are using gmu.maps.arcgis.com. So let's remember this one and continue. Uh, so now I'm going to log in with my uh, ArcGIS GMU account, which I already logged in. Uh, so now if I go to the content, so this is where all the data that you have uploaded. Um, okay, so you can see my previous data set, online maps, uh, map stories, uh, etc., and also apps. And on the left side, uh, you can see the, the folders that I created. So uh, this is a folder that I created for this video. So 2023 fall demo. So I opened that folder. And now you can see uh, there are two data sets. The first is uh, mental data, which is now private. So only the owner can view it. So that's fine. The second one is a data set, which is a feature layer. And you can see it is public. That is because uh, when we choose upload from ArcGIS Pro, we send that one to be public. So anyone will be able to access this uh, data set. So let's open this one. Uh, and from here, you can still uh, manage your uh, data set. So for example, you can give it uh, descriptions. Um, and also, uh, if you don't want to share your data, you can also change the settings to, to make that one to be uh, private. Etc. Uh, so let's go ahead and also create a map. So let's open that in the map viewer. Uh, so someone, if you're using the old one, so you can just use this map viewer classic. Uh, we are using the new map viewer. So let's open the default one because I think the new map viewer is, is great. So let's open that in the map viewer. Uh, so now this is uh, uh, the interface of the map viewer, you can see that our data is here. So if you expand the layers, so in our data set, we have two layers, uh, mass routing data and also county populations. And if you click uh, these three dots, or you can zoom into your layers and you can also uh, show the attribute tables. Uh, so that's here. So you can see uh, the number of people being injured, killed, instant date, instant ID, etc. You can also view the attribute table for your uh, county. Uh, you can also add additional layers. So if you have data that is available on ArcGIS Online, you can also add other data set. Uh, you can also add the tables. For example, if you want to create a chart, uh, you can change the base maps. You can create the charts here. Uh, I just wasn't sure if we can upload the charts, but we do definitely can create charts on ArcGIS Online. Uh, so those will be your legend. 
you can also add bookmarkers. Uh, so let's save this map first. So let's save that one as a map. So I'm going to call it Lab 11 Demo Map. Uh, we need to give it tagger, uh, tags. So mass shooting. And also you can give a summary. So uh, I want to just call it Lab 11 Online Maps. Okay. Um, you can you can definitely provide better summaries as as I than I did. Uh, you can also uh, change the map properties, and you can share the map, uh, create an app, and also even you can even print your map. Uh, so that's on the left side. So you can view your layers, and you can do uh, and those are the options that are available. On the right side, you can view the properties. So for example, if you check a layer. Uh, you can view the properties. For example, you can change the transparency, uh, change the layer style, or you can change the visible range. So, um, and you can change the style. So this is where we are going to start to create a map. Um, you can filter the data. Uh, uh, you can change some, add some effects. So those are really nice effects that uh, was not available in the old uh, Arctis, uh, map viewer. So. If you are using the map viewer classic, so you, you will not find out those effects. Uh, we can also enable some aggregation, for example, clustering. We can also define the pop ups, uh, define the fields, uh, add labels, configure charts. Uh, so, this is where you can create the charts, uh, forms. Uh, you can also perform the very simple spatial analysis. So, for example, if you open the tools and not all the analysis are uh, like in ArcGIS Pro, so we have like hundreds of the tools. But in ArcGIS Online, we only have, uh, let's say, probably uh, just a few of them. But uh, those are just the most commonly used tools, for example, like Enrich, which is my favorite. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and start our map. So uh, we are going to first uh, create a proportional symbol map where we're going to show the size of the dots, uh, use the size dots to represent the number of people being injured in different events or in, in different mass routine instances. So make sure that the mass routine layer is selected. And then we're going to go to styles. Uh, so first, you need to choose which fields you are going to use to uh, visualize. So let's add a field. Uh, I'm going to choose uh, the number of people being injured. Okay, so the number of people injured is not selected. And uh, now you can choose uh, the different type of map. So this is a proportional symbol map. And this is the heat map. So if you choose heat map, and now you can see you have heat map. Uh, you can also have the other uh, choice like color and the size, uh, etc. So as I said, we're going to use a proportional symbol map. So we're going to choose size. And then we change the options. So you can choose the uh, do you want to use a high to low uh, theme, which means that uh, you don't have a range you want to emphasize? Or do you want to emphasize you know, the data that is beyond above a threshold, like zero? So if you choose above, and then the data that um, more than average will have bigger uh, circles. Um, you can also choose below, so which like if, if you want to emphasize small values. So in our case, let's just choose high to low. And you can choose do you want to divide by other values, so we know. Uh, you can change the color. So uh, do you want to use the basic points? Uh, do you want to change the colors? Uh, so let's say I will use orange. OK. And you can also define the transparency, etc. Um, so that's change the colors. You can manually change the data classifications and also the size. Uh, so for example, probably I think uh, 80 is too big, so I gave it uh, 60. Uh, so they will also you can you will also allow uh, to adjust the size automatically. Uh, do you also want to show the feature with no values, etc. Include legend. Uh, here you can also classify the data. So if you enable class data classifications, uh, again, 
our old friends like natural break, echo intervals, etc. will be here. So you can choose the way that you want to classify your data. So first of all, I want three uh, classes. And now probably this is too small, so I will get a 60. And this one I'll, I'll give 10. Okay, so that's data classification. And you can also change transparency. You can even rotate your data. So uh, that is the style. So I'm going to use uh, this orange. And uh, let's also try the aggregation, so which uh, I really like it. Uh, so we're going to cluster the points. So for example, if now, as right now, so if we zoom in at a larger scale, we will see those points are separate. Uh, like for example, here we have those points that are separate. But when I zoom out, I want those points to be aggregated. So that is clustering. So let's enable the aggregation. And now you can see if you... Uh, Zoom in, you will see the details, but if you zoom out, okay, so those points will be aggregated. Uh, let's change the options. So let's say classify field. Uh, so you can, they will show you the number of the features and also uh, for some reason, they will show the average of the people being injured. Um, I want to see the total of the people being injured. So I want some of the people being injured. So I added that field. And then for the labels, and I want to show the total uh, of the people being injured. Okay, uh, so now you can see here, this is the clustering. So now you can see here, uh, if we zoom in, uh, we can see all those points. But if we zoom out, we can see some of the points are aggregated. And we can see the total number of people being injured. All right, uh, so that is a, a clustering. Um, all right, uh, so let's save the map. So that's our uh, top layer. That's OK. And for our bottom layer, and we want to show the population density. So, uh, so first, let's uh, look at the attribute table. So. So on our attribute table, we can see we have total population in each county. And OK, so we have the uh, population in each county, total population. And we, if we want to use a car plus map to show the total populations, we know that is not recommended because for car plus map, we'd better easier to visualize the ratios or visualize the normalized data. So. Instead, we show the quantities or the total population in each county. We are going to show the population density, which is the total population divided by the area of the counties. Um, OK. And if we open this uh, settings, and we can see we do have the field that called shape area, which is not, it is just not showing up on the table. So we're going to use this field and the total population to calculate the population density, and then we are going to visualize that population density. All right. So again, make sure this uh, county layer is selected. And we are going to open the style, and we are going to define an expression. OK, so for this expression, we are going to call it uh, population density. And, and for the calculations, so we are going to use this one. So that is feature, the feature name of the population density divided by this feature or the column where the name is ship area. Because the area is in square meters, so we want to convert that into square kilometers. So that's why we need to multiply this value. All right, uh, let's try to run it. Uh, so you can see those are some uh, results. And let's see, click down. OK, uh, so now you can see we have the population density. But right now, uh, uh, the default map is a proportional symbol map. So let's choose a car plus map. So we are using colors. And here uh, for the same, so this one, let's try use a different one. So let's say we want to use above and below. So we want to show the data at above and below the values. So let's say above and below. 
Uh, let's also change the styles. Uh, so let's choose a different colors. Uh, remember that our uh, proportional sim map is using the orange color. So you may want to choose a different color that uh, that is not orange. Uh, so I'm going to try this one. Uh, on this one. Okay, I think the first one is better. Okay, so I will go ahead with first one. All right. And now we can see that this color that emphasizes the counties with high population density, which is like green, and also the low population density, which is green. So, um, all right. So I think I'm going to click OK. And uh, next, let's try some effects. So here you can try like uh, we can use uh, give it a sh shadow, uh, blur. So those are just you know for the entire layer. Or we can do some feature specific uh, effect. Uh, the one that I like is called strong drop shadow. So strong drop shadow. And I'm going to add an expression. Uh, so here I will choose the population. Okay, so here I, I want to have the the counties that being pop up where the population is great than the average value. So we can see average value is this value. Okay, six four five three zero. So that's average population that in Virginia. Um, so I want the county that above this value to be pop up. Okay, I think that's a very interesting feature. And next, I want to show the labels. So I want to enable the labels uh, for the counties. Uh, so let's add the labels. Uh, so I will choose a name, which will be the name of each county. And so I want to change the visible range, because you see that if you look at very small scales, um, if you have all the counties that have a label name, uh, name that being labeled, so it's very busy, so there are a lot of overlaps. So I'm going to change that one to be, let's see, at the state level. Okay. So if that beyond state level, and let's see if like, like this small uh, scale, you should not be visible. So let's put that to be state level. Okay, so if that's far away, so you should not be visible. Um, and not for this one, I'm going to put that one into, let's see, uh, town. Okay, so which means that if you zoom in at a very, very large scales, okay, and uh, the label should also not be visible. So it, which means that if you zoom in beyond that scale, so then the, uh, the label will is, is also not be visible. Okay, so uh, that is the visible range for the labels. Uh, you can also play with different uh, range. And next, I'm going to filter the label. So because you can see that uh, not all the content that I want label that, so I'm going to define a filter. And here again, I'm going to use the population as a filter. So here I want to see, okay, so if your population is above the average, Okay, and then I want to show the labels. Uh, if your population is uh, below the average, and I will not show the labels. Okay, so that is uh, great then. Okay, so now you can see only the county that uh, has a population that is above the average will be showing up the labels. All right, uh, so let's go back. Uh, let's also add it to the styles. Uh, we know that the color may not be easy to read. Uh, okay, uh, so those are the labels. Um, okay, and I think that's for the labels. Um, and finally, we're going to change our base map. So let's go ahead and also change the base map. And uh, you can choose a base map that you like. Uh, so probably I will go with the uh, green one. Okay, uh, so that's a base map. 
OK, uh, I think I, uh, I need, I'm going to change the colors uh, one more time. So I don't think the, uh, so let's see. For this one, uh, probably I need a this color uh, for this one let let me change the different colors um, okay how I use this okay and now for the labels uh, I think uh, I will keep using black Okay, uh, so that's that's far we bad. Okay, um, all right. So that is uh, our map. Uh, so we have two layers: uh, mass routine, which is a proportional symbol map. Uh, we have the legend here. Uh, we also have the population density, which is color plus map. And so basically, we can see that in the counties where we have higher population density, uh, we have more people that have been injured. And uh, the only exception is unfortunately Harrisonburg. Uh, where we have a lot of people being injured, but actually that's that's also a high population density uh, county. Okay, so yeah, so basically counties with high population density uh, normally will have high injuries because of the mass shootings. All right, uh, so let's save our map for final uh, one more time. And now we are ready to share this map. So let's go to share. And again, we want this one to be public so that anyone is able to see this map. So we go share it. OK, so that is our map. And normally, if you want to share this map, uh, you can just share this URL and also with other people, and people will be able to open your map. However, uh, in most cases, we want to share this map in the app. So let's go to our last step, that is create an app. Uh, so you can see you can create dashboard, which now is very famous. Uh, so like during the COVID, John Hopkins has the, the famous COVID dashboard. Uh, so that is used uh, was that was using the dashboards. You can also create a story map. So you put your map into your story map, and you can combine with other uh, elements. Um, so in our case, we are going to create a very simple one, which is called Instant App. So let's go to an Instant App. Instant app is great so far as you, if you just want to show the very basic map uh, with other people. So as I said, we are going to choose a very, very basic one. So let's choose a basic one. Uh, we will keep all the default settings. So that's our app. Uh, in this app, we are going to use the map that we created. OK, so you can see by default, uh, we will use the map that we created. Uh, so there are several settings. So let's uh, uh, so you select a map. You provide some informations. You add some interactivities, and also you design the layout, etc. Uh, so here they can add it. Uh, do you want a header? Okay. So that's your title. Uh, do you want your legend? And you can see your our legend will be here. Uh, do you also want uh, some other uh, uh, information uh, for this interactivities? Uh, do you want to add a layer list? So which means that the user can um, turn on or turn off your layers. Um, do you want to enable search? Do you allow people to take screenshot, uh, etc. Uh, so I would highly recommend that we uncheck the search. So do not use search, because if you enable search, we know that geocoding is very expensive. So let's uncheck search. OK. Um, and also same and the layout. So you can choose a mode. Do you want like darker mode or the lighter mode? OK. Or do you want a different same? Uh, so let's see. I'm going to use this one. Um, all right, I think that's it. So I'm going to write it to publish. So confirm. OK, so uh, my dashboard has been published. 
Uh, let's change the settings. So again, we want this one to be public. So we need our data to be public. We need our map to be public. We also need to be our app to be public. So all three need to be public so the other people is able to see your final uh, map. So let's save it. And uh, let's re-click re -click, uh, the publish. So I didn't copy that URL. So let's see, confirm. And I'm going to copy this URL. So that's a URL of your app. And I highly recommend that you test your URL in the private mode of your browser. So I'm using Firefox. So I'm going to open the private mode. I'm going to paste this URL. So that's a URL of your ArcGIS app. Um, so if you can open it, and if you can see your map and also your data, that means your, your app is not public. So here you can see we have the legend. OK. Um, all right, uh, so that's how to create a very simple online maps. Uh, if you, you, you may notice that uh, this map is not projected. OK, so uh, actually, I'm not sure that how we can define the pieces for the online map on ArcGIS Pro. So if you know how to do that, uh, please leave me a comment.